Hi, I'm Joe Gibson, and I'm a CASA advocate. My wife and I have eight children, 18 grandchildren, and I have 28 CASA kids that I consider part of my family. When I went into the CASA office and they asked me to, to take on this case, I looked at it and it was not going to be an easy case. You could tell that they were going to do drugs. Whenever I'd watch my siblings, they would make an excuse that they were going to go to their friend's house. But immediately when they got back, they, they wouldn't act the same. And after the high, I guess you could say it would wear off. That's when the fighting would start. They would constantly argue. My dad hitting my mom, holding a knife to her throat, just terrible things like that. I would hear my parents argue in the other room and just knowing from my dad's background of constantly fighting people, just being in prison several times, that whenever they'd argue and I'd hear my mom stop talking that he hit her and she was knocked out. And no man should put their hands on a woman like that. They lived in conditions where a lot of times they didn't have any food and the people that lived around them were involved in drugs and they provided them with food and stuff just so that the CPS or police would not come to the area that they were in to be involved with their illegal activities. You know, AJ had a tremendous responsibility for his younger siblings. He's just an amazing young man. They were, you know, begging us that night, just, you know, please don't make us go back because they were being abused. Well, AJ, he took on the role of the father and Audrey took on the role as a mother mm -hmm. because they were, Harley and Jeff were still babies. Mm -hmm. So she was doctoring and changing diapers and AJ was going out or forging for food, literally knocking yeah. on people's doors just to get SpaghettiOs. I mean, they had no electricity, no water. And their their mom and their dad would disappear for days at a time, sometimes Weeks. three, four, five days. So No money, no anything. That was like the key for us after we knew the whole story. Tina and Johnny said to us that they were all in and they, were, they would do anything that they could to keep us. Just knowing that they were going to be there for us no matter what through this whole process was amazing it, like nothing before them making sacrifices is when i knew they were serious about this that they they truly did love us i was kind of you know the, the little only child or whatever it was fun and then you know changing after that was like a really new experience for me. From the very moment that Corey and AJ met, you would have thought that they were twins. They hit it off immediately. We instantly clicked. It was it was really cool because he had a lot of the same interests as me, same music and stuff like that, so it was, it was really cool. And they get along perfectly. They get along better than most regular brothers do. You cannot imagine the thing, thought that probably went through these children. If this is going to be something that we're going to be out on the street, we're going to be in another place, they're going to put us in a facility, are they going to separate us? There was just thoughts that were going through these kids' minds, you know, that they didn't know what was going to happen. Joe was there to pretty much see how our lives were, if we were really meant to be with these people, to be an advocate for us. My first interaction was a phone call from Joe, introducing himself and told me that he was our CASA which I had never heard of CASA in my life. I was like, okay. I fell in love with Joe and I knew from that moment on, everything was gonna be okay. I scheduled my first visit with the, with the children and I went to their home. And what I saw when I got there was they were sitting there all just looking straight ahead ready to answer or ready to be on what I thought to be like interrogated. It seemed like they might be afraid to, of answering the wrong questions and everything. And I decided that I, I was going to do this case different. I was going to make it where they were comfortable answering any questions that I had, just trying to find out more about them. I remember telling him, you know, the, the fear for me is that I've promised these kids 
they're not ever going to get abused again. And I have to be able to keep that promise. <laughs> and I just really needed somebody to understand that. But it was really important to me for them not to ever have to suffer. And that day when we hung up the phone, I was just like, you know, it's going to be okay. I just know it is going to be okay. I decided instead of making these structured meetings that I was going to go and do things that they were interested in. AJ played football, and so I was going to do my visits at his football games. While I sat in the stands with all the other children and the parents, we just had a comfortable meeting. Their friends would come up and sit with us all in the stands together. It was just a relaxed atmosphere where they could be themselves, and then they didn't feel the pressure of anything. I remember the first game I went to, I walked up to him after the game, congratulated him on a good game, and I reached out my hand to shake his hand. He said, no way. He just reached and gave me this big, dirty, sweaty hug. And I said, you know what? I said, this is the way it needs to be. And it meant a lot to him that I was at his game. He's, he's awesome. He's a cool guy. Definitely warm-hearted. He, he cares about his job and cares about the kids that he's working for. He really, he's, he's sincere. This case had everything that could possibly go wrong with it go wrong. So it's like three days before our adoption day. We have t-shirts printed up, you know, the whole thing. We were excited. And we get a phone call from our CPS um, attorney. And she said, I have bad news. Your paperwork, the judge that you had, for all, we had the same judge for the whole time. He retired during this a few weeks before mm -hmm. adoption day. He wasn't going to do adoption day. And you're missing one piece of paper. We were ready to become an official family. We That's when we had planned and so kind of it, it hurt. So we were all devastated and the Came first, the very first room. thing I did was call Joe because I knew if anybody could help me it would be Joe. He said, I'm working on it. I'm at the courthouse right now. I'm working on it. I'm going to do everything I can. He never stopped. He just advocated to help us to get it done and he basically said I'm I don't know what I'm gonna do but I'm telling you y'all are gonna get adopted before this year is over with I'm I give you my word I'm gonna figure it out with Joe being there and seeing how our everyday life was him being the advocate really truly I feel like was the reason that we got adopted and within a few days he was on the phone saying okay he be made at the courthouse <laughs> this is your december 21st it's happening it's for sure thank I mean, god for constant <laughs> miracle worker <laughs> once the day came we knew like traveling to the court and everything being official it was it was cool it was unreal honestly that adoption day was probably the coolest thing that i've ever witnessed in my life so they really and, are the judges, right? And we got to the courthouse that morning, and guess who the very first person we saw, because he was already there waiting for us, Joe. I've had a lot of good things in my life. All my children, all my grandchildren, I love all that. But that was a special day, too, is seeing these kids get a new home and new family. And it was just, it was amazing. I nominate him for CASA of the Year, <laughs> if, if I can, if I have any pull for that. <laughs> CASA has developed Joe's weak areas into actually some more areas of his strength because he finds ways to resolve problems so that everyone is at peace with what's happening. The CPS worker, they love him. The CASA supervisor, she loves him. The judges, they want to hear from him. And of course, because everything he does has that single focus of accomplishing the best for the kids, he is an effective CASA advocate. He really is. I, I see a, a, a great future for all these kids. I see them all doing well. AJ wants to be a firefighter. He's going to school, uh, going taking classes and everything on that. He wants to be a EMT, We're studying hard and uh, want to be able to help people. I think the fact that what he saw Tina and John do made a difference in his life. And I think he's going to be able to, to use that same thing that he saw in them is to go on and be able to help other people. They made a lot of sacrifices, especially for like having six kids now and giving up their time to help us with all of it. Um, she cares about me and I love him. They're very loving, very accepting, really nice and 
They like take care of you. They love all of us and they really support us in everything we do. And same way with the other kids. They can't help but learn from the, the love and everything that Tina and John gave them. How they, They'll be able to make a difference in people's life for sure.